Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck. Fucking thing sucks. Remember that video from back in the day? I think it was Bill O'Reilly or something. He's like, fuck it. We'll do it live. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> I love that one. So what happens if you have no intro in your mind that you want to put anymore because you didn't really haven't edited a single video in a month. But the last thing I was doing was like a music video for somebody, but I haven't really been able to get back on that, unfortunately. It's, it's busyness. Work's been hitting hard, man. It's a good thing, though. Your boy needed to get back to work a little bit. Just sitting my ass doing nothing all day. But making flag football videos and yeah, that's about it. It was fun times, I guess. Fun while it lasted. And now here we are, fall of 2021. What are we, like, almost done already, Ross Collins? We're about halfway through this fall. It was a pretty fast fall. It's kind of like a shorter season compared to where we were back in the spring, where I felt like spring was a journey. What do you think, Ross? I don't know. It'd be crazy. Are we live? We are live. Oh, shit. We're finally live. You didn't know we were live? No. Do you watch our show? No? I didn't think you did. No, you did. I didn't think you did. Every once in a while. I don't really blame you. Sometimes. I'm not where I watch it. I'm here. Well, you know, you can get some new insight and perspective in the morning after you hear it. I I gotta start, like, making it. Give him a like. How about that? Give him a like it? I usually do that. Go to the like it. There you go. That's something at least. I'm almost done sharing it across I'm the page. Man, I guess. I'm a free bird, more so. <laughs> something like that. Strong fly. I'm slipping out. Free bird. <laughs> the Slipknot concert where it's ACDC playing in the background? I think it was like in between songs. Oh, was Either it? way, it makes sense, right? Or was that Subnot's <laughs> cover of For Those About the Rock? No, that was definitely the ACDC recorded version of uh... For Those About the Rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess we got to be serious for a moment. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's episode of Blunt Talk. I'm your host, Joey Blaze. Joining me tonight in studio is Ross Collins. Hey, hey. There you go. I was waiting for that. All right. There we go. That's me. That's you. Well, I guess we should get to the action and everything that went down. Shut yeah. up, stupid. Some idiots yeah, talking. God, ugh, ter- oh, God. Oh, I don't want to hear that voice. Ugh. Hey, ugh. Your haze okay. Mm, my voice isn't. Oh, all right. Well, Ross, how was your weekend? Pretty good. Good? Yeah, good. That's good. Mm-hmm. Same for me. I think it was a good weekend for everybody, really. Like, get a chance to go out there, play some flag football with the boys. Always a good time. Filled a couple games. I got on the ground a little bit this week. Three of them we had for you on Saturday. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed them. Hey, shout out Ricky John Francois tuning in on Saturday. Former defensive tackle, LSU, the Redskins, the Patriots. Uh, 49ers man was around for a while yeah he's down there in the south florida flag football association doing great things with shannon Knowles, and i even see rocky and cato down in there too playing you got some names from the past popping up it yeah rocky and cato the former standout at marshall way back the last great thundering herd quarterback they had man it's cool. I'm I'm glad you can see a lot of talented players. And you know, I talked to Ricky John. I messaged him comment wise, back and forth for the nine man page. Right. Ricky John Francois will be at Nationals. That's what he's saying. So I'd like to see him come out there. I just see more talent get out there and play this game, man. Like people always said, NFL players used to come down and play a nine man many years ago. I personally think it would be a great thing to see. I do too. Without further ado, let's go ahead and let's pull up. You know, it's always here. It's my usual. Here we go. Results for this week. Professor Blaze on the call. I'm missing one score. Didn't get a chance to put it in there because I need the score till late. Uh, let's go a recap of KFFL, starting with the game of the week. West Virginia Venom in primetime. 
That was a nice one to start the day. 25-21, Venom over primetime. That was the battle for second place. And in the end, Coley Jones and Venom yeah. with a – what a performance. And it was tough because – for a bit there, Coley was struggling in the DB position. Venom secondary had problems with Bob Moore and company, especially on those play actions. Yeah, be careful. Tear you up. I know. You got to watch Champ. And that's, he's one of those guys who, like, he could sell that play action fake better than a lot of guys can. People forget that play action skill set. If you could sell it enough, it's very valuable at the quarterback position. A lot of guys just think it's a matter of just faking a handoff. There's an art to it. And on that one play, like they bit on it, and it bit them back twice. But in the end, it was a play that Coley made to Bonte Redmond late in the game to get the game-winning touchdown. Venom 25, prime time 21. I like uh, Coley's uh, post-game interview, too. That was awesome, I want man. to comment on that. I watched that, and I was like, that was cool. Yeah, that was great. I was proud. I was happy for Coley. Yeah, you know, we had, yeah. I had talked about years ago, like, him coming in for the Bearcats and – and that result actually came up the other day. That very game, I believe, was against Ruckus when they almost beat him 13-12 to 12 with Coley at QB back during Ruckus' third season in Washington County. Right. Um, so, big shout-out to Phantom. They're second place now in KFFL. We'll have the standings up in a moment. Um, Pride time, I don't have it on here, but I got the message way after I had made this. It was kind of a hectic day between work and getting this all together the last two days and everything else. Busy, busy times ahead, Mr. Ross Collins. Um, prime time, 35, outlaw six. Ooh. Yeah, prime time. Yeah, I was wondering about that. So yeah. Like, prime time is getting easy. 35 to six. It, tough sledding for the outlaw. Right out the gate, having to play prime time. First leg of two in their tour of York. Right afterwards, Wolverines, 30 to nothing over the outlaws. Um, so Outlaws 0-2 on the day. Rough day for them. Minus 59 between both Wolverines and Primetime. But it's tough about Sean Simmons. He wasn't there. Um, Caleb Duchelle was the starting quarterback for them in both games. And unfortunately, just not the results needed for the Outlaws. Um, next game after that, Wolverines 32, Pierre Chaos 6. This game wasn't close either. Um, Wolverines on point. TJ Holston showing no real signs of stopping. Uh, even Scott Reynolds got in the fun, throwing a touchdown at the very yeah, end. Yeah. The Give a shout out to Scott. Made his debut back in 94. Still going strong all these years later. Um, so Wolverines 2 0 on the day, plus 56 between those two games. Got to give a shout out. They're doing really well in the KFFL so far this season. That squad of them and that squad overall, Elite Rebels and Baez Auto coming together for that little conglomerate with the Wolverines. They got something going on that can really pay dividends for the rest of this season up in Keystone. Um, so going on to the final two, Misfits coming out the gate. They had a double dose of donuts, two dozen donuts for Pure Chaos and the Killer Bees. They beat the Killer Bees and Chaos 28 and up in each. Neither game close at all. Just total domination. Misfits only had 13, but it was the right 13 to win the game, and they won it in sound fashion. So, a big shout out to the number eight team in the country. Let's now pull up the standings of KFFL. Number eight team in the country. Yeah. There's our standings for the KFFL. Misfits 6 and 0. They're in first place. West Virginia Venom, they're up there too. They're about sitting at four and one. Primetime and Wolverine technically tied at three and one, but Primetime has the better point differential so far. So we're going to nod to Primetime there for third place. Wolverines get fourth. Demons sitting at fifth at three and three. They were off this week. They'll be back. X Dolph to six, two and two. They were also off. Tri State Spartans one and one, or one and three rather. They're off again. Um, Outlaws, Bees, and Chaos rounding that up. So we'll see what each of these teams do the rest of the way as we continue onward. Yeah. OMFFL results. It's a little small. I apologize. I didn't put that up in full screen. I hope that's readable for you guys. Might want to put this in full screen if you're trying to look at it. Um, oh, yeah, a little small. Um, this were the results. Let me go to some detail. Number 14, Maryland Titans 12, Maryland Venom 6. Number eight, Misfits, 16. is no, Number six, No Mercy, Scorpion, six. Number eight, Elite Rebels, 18. Or, sorry, number eight, Misfits, 18. Number nine, Elite Rebels, six. 
So Misfits, they had this little uh, Basper Bowl esque thing going there with the Rebels and Scorpions. Right. Nice little triple threat. And in the end, Misfits 2 0 in that triple threat with a plus margin of 22. Overall for the weekend, Misfits plus 78 in four games yeah. against the Bees, Chaos, Scorpions, and Rebels. So 4 0 for the Misfits this weekend. Big shout out to them. That momentum is still going. They might be the hottest team in the country right now, but a lot of people are overlooking. But they better be careful overlooking this squad because they're coming up there to New York this weekend of a statement to be made. Yeah. Um, number 14, Maryland Titans defeated Rampage, number seven by a forfeit. Uh, same thing, Maryland Venom also defeated Rampage by a forfeit. Rampage looking to do some workload. They were a little bit fatigued. You got to. They're at the point where they're at their 49th nine-man game since Nationals. And overall, if you want to count, and this is not counting the preseason exhibitions where they played, I think, about 10 games of that. So that's 59. And then you throw in Nationals. Rampage has played almost 65 games this year of nine-man flag football. And we're not even through October yet. But this week, they needed that they wanted to take off, so they decided to. Rampage takes the forfeit loss instead. Um, they're not ready. They're not worried about these two games. They're they got other things to look forward to ahead. They're at that point where they know what's coming up. They know what to look forward to. So they're not worried about these two games. Another forfeit went on. Maryland Titans defeated the Bulls via forfeit. The Bulls also forfeited to the Baltimore Spartans. In fact, the Bulls forfeiting the rest of the season. They are finished. So that is it for the Bulls at the end of their first season. From what I gather, the next two are listed on the site as the same 18 nothing forfeit. So that seems to be it for the Bulls, uh, for the season at least. I, they did have a lot of problems. Remember, they lost their starting quarterback back in the spring. Yeah. It's been downhill since then, some injuries. And you get to a point, I feel like, where is it really worth playing <laughs> out when you don't really have a shot and you're struggling to get through? Right. Because you're at the point where you want to get meaningful reps, but at the same time, you also don't want to risk anything else considering there's a lot more to play for next year when you get everybody back if things work out. Let's just see the Bulls do come back, though. That was a team that had a lot of problems at the start of the season back in the spring. Yeah. Injuries, however, just took this team down. We had mentioned, I believe they're going to end this year on what will be a 13-game losing streak dating back to May or dating back to June, rather. I think their last win was at Atlantic City when they beat Steel. So, been a while for the Bulls. So, hopefully they'll bounce back and do better. Let's just see more of them next year. I don't know. If the, hopefully they'll pop up in a tournament, maybe something, somewhere. We'll see. If somebody gave me more insight on the Bulls, that'd be cool. That was just something I had seen earlier. They had two 18 nothing scores listed on the OMFFL site as well as an 0 and 8 finish for the Bulls. So I think that's a forfeit for the rest. I think they're done overall. He's doing live now. It's been busy. I think he's been working. Yeah. Tough times, man. It is a busy time. Yeah. Life's catching back up in a fast way right now. Um, number 21, Bad Boys, 18, Maryland Venom, nothing. No Mercy Scorpions, number six, defeating number 14, Maryland Titans, 25 to 7. Scorpions wrapped the day with beating the Rebels 13 to 6. So Scorpions 2 and 1 on the weekend. They skipped out on Clash of York the week prior, but they get their own little circuit bump with the Misfits, Titans, and Rebels. They come out overall 2 and 1. Um, margin for that one at the end ended up being uh, plus 15 in those three games. Good margin for the Scorps. They got something going still. The, the Misfits lost a little tough, but they'll bounce back. There's still a long season to go for this team. Right. And, of course, we mentioned the Bulls forfeiting to the Baltimore Spartans. So let's go ahead and pull up the standings for OMFFL. First place right now is the Bad Boys, 4-1 and one on the year. Bad Boys starting to turn around a little bit here. Yeah, we're starting to see a different kind of Bad Boys from what we were seeing back over the spring and summer. We had talked about it. They had been in a slope coming into this season – but you take a look at it since the beginning of this past OMFFL season, the bad boys at this very moment are sitting at six wins, three losses, and a tie. They're turning it around. They've won six to ten. They're getting there. They had a semifinal appearance in York. 
They are 4-1 right now in Oberfell. They have a chance to clinch first place in the league. And coming into playoffs as a high seed, are the bad boys the dark horse perhaps to look forward to in this league? Because I know they're first place, but it's a team that at the beginning of the season, everybody was kind of yeah on. The Misfits were above them, the Scorpions, the Titans, the Rebels, Rampage. Stiff competition all around. Um, and I'm actually getting a guest on right now. So we're going to get back to this in a moment. Our first guest coming on is Dallas, is what it says. That's Dallas first coming on. Plays a Baez Auto on the circuit. However, on Saturdays, you can find him up in Shippensburg for the Wolverines. Uh, Mr. First, welcome to the show. How you doing, big guy? Doing good, doing good. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Hey, that's, uh, that's an interesting jersey you got to the back left you got there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I got it the other day. It was a nice little gift from Jamie right at the end of the game. So we got two yeah. of those boys up there right now, the black one and the white one, actually. Yeah, um, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Will we take any jerseys donated? If anybody I- wants if we're co- if, if you're about the nine man sport or any event we're covering, we'll have it right here in the back wall. No, I got to get you one of them bias ones, man. I got the uh, blue bot, the, the old yeah, the old bias. school, yeah. the old school. I got to get you a new school. I, I like the new school one. I think the redesign was a good move for Baez Auto. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So what brings you on tonight, Dallas? Actually, um, I wanted to get on here on behalf of the Wolverines. Um personally um extend out um an apology to lee john um He's from taking- myself as a captain of the wolverine straight to him personally uh from the words from my mouth it's a lot more uh impactful than you know just a message on facebook or a comment on the page or anything else like that so on my behalf i want to reach out to him and hope he has a speedy recovery and uh apologize for everything that transpired that day and um, really hope everything's well with him. Um, you know, something like that shouldn't have happened. Um, unfortunately, I can't change the events of what did happen. Uh, but, you know, nevertheless, you know, we, we never like to see a player get injured uh, and, and wanted to, you know, reach out and send my sincere apology uh, on behalf of the whole Wolverine team um, and hope that everything's well with him. And if he needs anything, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're more than happy to help out. Thank you, Dallas. Thank you. That's that's awesome of you. I really we really appreciate that. Our prayers and thoughts are out there to Houston right now. For those who didn't watch over the weekend, Houston sustained an injury. He's uh, playing for pure chaos. Uh, some of you may have seen him on the Killer Bees, however, last week at Clash of York, putting up points for the Bees against Rampage. He had a touchdown on there. Him and Lucas running some option ball. Um, but Houston sustained an ACL tear on Saturday on on the sideline. It was a bit of a collision. His knee had planted and got stuck, and that's usually what will cause an injury like that, especially with impact coming in. It's a shame. Houston, we talked about his second year. Last year, a guy, he really made a name for himself, came onto the scene, had a big game of misfits last year in Washington County. You remember that big run he had where just yeah. they couldn't pull his flag at all, man? Can't count him out anytime, man. That guy is a baller. I really hope we get a chance to see him again, though. But, like, most oh, important, man. it's a tough one. To, you're still recovering from your knee injury right now, Ross. You've been rehabbing for a year now Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, like, more importantly, I just hope he's able to get back to work, get everything paid off, have life going. Like, he's out there. He talks about it all the time. The biggest thing he's from traveling is just life commitments, work commitments. Like, he's out there on the grind. Like, we sometimes we forget, like, these guys do got to go to work on Monday or even sometimes at night. There's players who will play a Saturday morning game that head right to work right after. You've had guys on their lunch breaks come play. We've seen that before. Like... And that's the beauty of this sport at times is like being able to have guys from all walks of life and all different places and different professions come together and play on the field together. Oh yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree. Like you said, uh, I mean, coming from a person that suffered a knee injury myself. So, I mean, I get it. I, I understand uh, the frustration, the aggravation and everything else like that. And that's why I felt like it was very important for at least somebody from the Wolverine team to get on here and, you know, send out a sincere apology to him. He he deserves, you know, 
more than that, but as a sign of respect, you know, I thought it was very important to get on here and, and just make it well-known. Um, you know, obviously we all feel some type of way about it and, you know, we, we never like to see something like that happen. So, you know, I felt like we needed to come on there and um, just let, just let it be known. So. We appreciate that Dallas. We appreciate yep. that 100%. And, you know, the other day I wasn't trying to start anything when I put that up there, I was just upset because I just felt like with Houston, it just felt like there was no regard for what happened with him. And, you know, yeah, we, I think we talked for that, talk that none cut. It's just one of those things where, yeah. Can and I, I think, can I, yeah. say some background? I think, I honestly think no. that, uh, that, that message might have gotten a little misconstrued. I don't think it was more so a shot at, uh, uh, I believe you said his name's Houston. I don't think it was more so at that. I think he was just talking about the kind of game he was having up there. Uh, but he I did. The guy, the guy in question who made the play on the sideline, he was playing a good game. I will not yeah. disagree with that. And I, I think, think there was just a lot of emotion. I, and I felt for him yeah. mostly watching his mother on the sideline. You know, she's there making the food and everything else and drinks for the players. Her, it's his mother. Absolutely. His friend there. Right. Can, can I can I ask a question? Is Spoken Broth on the uh, Wolverine? Yeah, he's on the Wolverine. He, uh, he's, my, my he's one main of the linebackers. Thing, my main thing with the whole thing was his comment. The six sacks and a crack. Yeah, I get yeah. what you're saying there. Yeah. yeah. And I think yeah, that's I, 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 like I said, I, 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 think, I, get, I get what you guys are saying, and I wasn't saying for that comment. I'm speaking specifically on Jamie uh, Lagana's post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We understand. Yeah, I was just saying that – I think he was just saying that he was having one heck of a weekend up there and probably really bad timing on his end, to be completely honest with you. Probably not the right time uh, to really post something like that at that moment. But like I said, um, irregardless, it doesn't matter how it all transpired. I just want to get on here – no excuses, no no reason it should have happened. And just send a sincere apology out to Houston um, and just reach yeah. out to him and tell him that we're all thinking of him. We wish him well. And um, like I said, if he needs anything, just reach out to us. We appreciate that. Like I always say, like, yeah, that, I always say, like, Dallas first is one of the classiest guys you'll feet out there on the field. Like, he, he his play is just as good as his character. Like, <laughs> But, like, I wish Houston the best of luck in recovery. I'd love to see him out here again. I, be- I think, he, I think he'll be back. Be he'll back be back work. stronger than he was before. You know, it's just a minor setback for a big comeback. I'll be ready for it. I'll be ready for it 100%. Um, anything else you got on for, in your mind tonight, Dallas? No, no. Just wanted to reach out. Um, you know, usually I get on here and like to talk my – talk my trash a little bit but today was a little bit of a different approach it's more you know down to earth and you know at the end of the day we we may talk trash between the lines but at the end of the day we want to make sure everybody's healthy so uh, this was more so you know reach out send an apology and then I'll do my trash talk you know sometime in the middle of uh, next week <laughs> we'll have more of that for sure another I believe, are you guys playing this weekend or are you guys home? no no we have a bye this week and I think the week after is the uh, York Bowl against Primetime. I believe so, yeah. The YAFFL Bowl. I'm ready. Well, like I said, I'll be on next week to go ahead and talk about that one. That's so. going to be a good one. That's going to be a good one. But and for now, gonna I'm going gonna, gonna, I'm I'm to make it an early night. I got to go put the little ones to bed, but I just want to hop on here quick. Thank you, Dallas, for coming on. We appreciate you. We'll see you on the field next weekend. All right, buddy. Hey, you guys have a good night. Drink a couple more Millers. It's always Miller time here. <laughs> All right, later. See you, Dallas. See ya. All right, Dallas first joining the show. Glad to have Dallas on. Let's pull back up the OMFFL rankings. You just saw them there. Bad Boys, of course, they're fourth place. If they win about three more games, they will, I believe, should will be clinched that spot. They got to win three, though, in order to get the first seed. Misfits right now, they have the tiebreaker on the bad boys. Um, so if bad boys go three and oh, they get it. If they go anything less, however, they it will go to the misfits in that two spot, taking number one. Um, misfits should know by the time the bad boys lose. If they do, we'll see how they do. I said that way too much. <laughs> Tongue twisting myself already. No mercy scorpions, their third place right there, five, two, and one. 
They're off next week. Both them and Misfits will be up in GCFFA. Maryland Titans, they're five and three. They're kind of stuck where they're at as well. Elite Rebels, three and two. They can move up to about the number two seed. They're not going to surpass Misfits in any way, shape, or form. They can still pass Scorpions, but they got to be perfect this weekend. Uh, I believe they may have already gotten one, actually, with a forfeit. So I think both Bad Boys and Elite Rebels do get a forfeit in this one. So one should be a five and one, and the other four and two. Uh, we'll have that more on that in a minute. Baltimore Spartans, they're two and three right now. They have a chance to get as high as the fifth seed. But if they lose out, they could fall as low as the eighth. Um, Maryland Benham, they're two, four, and one. They got about one more game left. They can move up, but not too much. Maybe the sixth spot at best. A loss, and they will fall to the eighth spot. Rampage, believe it or not, eighth seed, they're two and four. They win both. They can go up as high as the fifth seed, which will set up yet another Maryland Titans Rampage quarterfinal matchup. Yeesh. Do we have to do this all over again? <laughs> there is a possibility of a fifth Maryland Titans versus Rampage quarterfinals matchup this year. It never ends. <laughs> And Bulls, I think they're ninth. I don't think they'll play playoffs. I think they're done. So they're going to finish that spot. And we'll see where we end up at. Still a lot of football to be played up in Baltimore. Let's go ahead and continue the slideshow over to the MAFL results from this week. Going over to recap there. Southside 13, number 23, Dream 6. Good win for Southside going on there and beating the uh, A team in Dream. Tough loss for Dream, who right now is just faltering at the moment. You got a question to start wondering where this team is heading. Still some meaningful football to be played, but some tough sledding right now. But for what I hear, it's been a tough fall for a lot of teams. I'm not really quite sure what's going on down there on Tucker Road, but I feel like a lot of teams have struggled this year getting guys to the field, getting everything to 100%. Fall is a weird time. Hopefully they'll get it back on track. Uh, Playmakers Elite defeated only us 13-6. to six. Um, big win for PME going out there and beating only us who've been doing a lot of good work out there the last couple of months. PME, of course, they're not ranked at the moment. We'll talk about that in a minute and elaborate on what's going on there, but they have had an impressive comeback in this 2021 season. They are a team to look out for, and I'm looking forward to seeing what PME can do for the rest of this season. Number seven, Blackhawks, or sorry, number 24, Blackhawks, seven, Black, South Side zero on that one. Um, Tommy Lightfoot and company coming in very light on foot with only about 11, 12 guys, but it, nonetheless, they played old school Blackhawk football, it's time possession, train the clock, score, get stops, all you need, Blackhawks victory. Number 22, FOE, 19, PME, 18. This is the game of the day, obviously. These two went back and forth. Great battle between FOE and PME. Um, if I got that backwards, let me know. I'm kind of wondering about that now because I swear I think I put that in the wrong way. No, that's the right result. Yeah, we got it. So FOE getting a win on PME. I believe that's PME's first loss this season and MAFL. So big shout out to the FOE. They've been getting better. They are showing they can locally measure up in A. I look forward to seeing what this team can do for the rest of the way. Number 15, ride out six. Number 23, dream zero. This was a nice little old school slugfest between an experienced team and a young team. Right out in the end, comes away with a dub. Give it up for Lionel and company. They get the win. Uh, number 18, only us wins. 18 to nothing over the Blackhawks. Old school math will match up between these two. They, these guys have played against each other for years. Um, in the end, this chapter, however, was the only us, despite Blackhawks didn't quite have the numbers. Long day, long morning. Only us gets to win. They get some revenge from Charm City, but not quite the satisfaction you'd get in another game. And the wrap of the day, it was number 22, FOE, 18, number 15, ride out, 14. These are, by the way, the rankings we have here for TBT, Wallace Collins and myself. Um, this was a nice little game. FOE, 2-0 and on the day. They beat PME and ride out. They're starting to get some momentum. FOE, keep an eye on them. They had a good run last season. They're just – it feels like they just lose at the wrong time is what hurts FOE. We'll see what they do. However, going forward, let's keep this progressing. Take a look at the map of standings. P 
PME right now, they're seven and one on the year. FOE, they're second at six and two. Um, from there in the standings, it is only us. They're four and three. Right out four and four. Dream three and five. Southside two and six. And at the bottom, Blackhawks one and six. So those are your standings in Maffle. They still got a week. From what I was, I was talking to Tommy, and he said there's a lot of number issues because of football, kids football, and everything else. Busy season, man. You and I were talking about it. Just it's hard. It can be hard to find time sometimes, especially when you're doing it all year. Really, a lot of people have just been playing football since after Worlds last year. When you think about it, we've really had like two years compressed into one in a weird kind of way. And I think that burnout is starting to hit a lot of guys. And now that life's starting to catch up again, it's like the shuffle was there. It's crazy. Like, when I go back and think about when I started, started because I was doing nothing but football. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, like, I even th- I remember even thinking about the Warriors just making them a fall only team. Yeah, because of the spirit like the of football, the, you just wanted to play the sport of football in general. Great. Yeah. They were on to something there. <laughs> well, that was because I think with Top Gun, they had, they had drills and stuff in there. It was just drill, and I think a couple other things. There was a couple reasons for that. I can't remember the fall reasoning anymore. That was so long ago. Oh, I, I think you'll spring only team was, uh, I think you'll start seeing a lot of workload like that, but it's tough because you don't want to take off too much time between nationals. Because right. if you take off too much time, then you lose all the work you had. It's all about balance and workload. It's like NASCAR, man. They have like the big, no, like the Super Bowl. Of the season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never understood that. That's wild. Rhode Island, we're going up north now. I got Rhode Island results on here. Oh, that. Number five, Lions, 31, 401 pressure, 14. Wild card, six, steal, zero. Brick squad, 14, straight forward, six. Brick squad. Yeah, Brick squad nation. You saw them at Ocean City. Yeah, I was going to ask if they were still a thing. They are. It, it is, it's tough traveling down here from Rhode Island. Like, I get the props for coming yeah, down here for OC. Yeah. Like, those guys had a rough because they lost to Baez at 8.30, 9 o'clock. They had to drive back to Rhode Island that day. I can't imagine OC to Rhode Island. Have they been in any other tournament? They were in Lydia's Legacy up in Albany. Okay. Yeah. I think they'll also be at Rhode Island Flag Bowl as well. So, they'll get their third imagine. one in. Yeah, yeah. Home tournament. I'd like to see it. Um, number 20, 148 Outlaws, 26. Rhode Island Spartans, 6. And then finally to wrap up their day, Brick Squad nine, Savage is six. Yeah, that's the one with the cowbell on the sideline. Yeah, yeah, I told you about that. The world's last year they had a cowbell. Yeah, right. yeah. So, yeah. so there's your standings for the Rhode Island flag football. Right now, number one, Lions eight and uh, they're dominating up there at the moment. But they got the one forty eight outlaws getting behind them at five and two. Brick Squad as well at five and two. Those two teams, keep an eye on them for playoffs. They're the ones to look forward to. What's that? You're looking at me weird. Yeah, I'm wondering. I know they, Rick Squad had a couple outlaws on the team for OT. So I guess that was just because they traveled. So yeah, yeah, usually with yeah, traveling. Yeah, 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 I've never really seen their league team. It, it's, it's tough because, like, I always say, like, Teams are different at every tournament. No team has ever 100% the same guys they had in the last tournament. Right. They'll have, like, core guys, but you'll never see the exact same guys. I think David Butler has been on Rampage, Elite Rebels. Oh. I've seen him on Ride Out this year. <laughs> guys just pop up Look, with David. David Butler's my guy, but he's getting around. <laughs> Yo, he went to rings, though. That's all that matters. Yeah, he knows where to go, I guess. The Butler did it. He sees know where to go. Works. Four on one pressure, four and two. They're at their fourth place. Wild card, they're four and three. Savage is four and four. Straight forward, four and four. Rhode Island Titans, they're sitting at two, three and two. Steel, they're one, five and one. Rhode Island Spartans, they're 0, 06 and one. And Rebellion's in the basement as well at 0, 06 and one. It's 
Spartans teams, man. I feel like you should name your team that. <laughs> we got what four Spartans right now in the yeah, nine-man yeah, circuit: yeah. Baltimore, Tri-State, that Rhode team. Island, St. Louis. <laughs> we need a four-team Spartan tournament. No, St. Louis is runner-up. Yeah, St. Louis. Yeah, they're, they're the ones that break the mold, I guess. Try state almost yeah, one in, county. In typical St. Louis style. Yeah, but come on. Rhode Island Spartans <laughs> have a cowbell. <laughs> the Baltimore Spartans are getting somewhere. Yeah. They had a good start so far for just starting in August. Like I said, I, I didn't say any of them were trash. It's just none of them are that good other than St. Louis breaks the mold a little. It's all about the loop. Irony is, I don't think they played in uh, St. Louis nine man this year. So I don't know when we'll see them again if we yeah, do. That's the other yeah. That's why. GCFFA standings. Uh, I didn't, I couldn't get results for GCFFA, but I do have their standings. Uh, first place, Misfits, they're 2 0. Second, yeah, Misfits are on the cusp of being first place in three leagues. There is a possibility the Misfits could finish first place in the regular season in three leagues. Oh, we we'll got to talk about that in a moment. <laughs> Second is the Panthers. They're four and one. The Panthers are the Ducks and Demons conglomerate. They've come together for a bit. Um, I have not counted these results toward either franchise yet. I'm kind of wanting to see where this goes. Something tells me, I, I don't know. I get the feeling you might see this a little more going forward. Right. So far, they're four and one together, so that might not be a bad idea. You know, we talked about the Long Island Demons. They had a hard time getting some numbers, but despite the number issue, they were still competitive when we saw them in OC. They went down there. They beat Broad Axe and Killer Bees. They beat both the county and Keystone champions. Um then they went in AC, and I thought in AC they didn't look bad either. They got a win on them. They ended up beating the New York Rebels. Uh, they fell to the Dragons, but beat AFN, uh, a- a.k.a. only us now, because that was the petty team. That's when they started working together. Um, they beat them on day two. They lost in the quarters. So, like, the Demons could definitely play. Some can the Ducks. We see what the Ducks can do. Quarter finalists in OC. Lost to the bad boys. They got to the quarters – in uh, AC, lost to uh, the, the Reapers. They got to the semis in Lydia's Legacy, lost to the Punishers. They're a capable team. I wanted to see this Panther team do a little more. Good. I wanted to see this team on the circuit. I want to see what happens there. I would like to, I don't know. We'll see. A lot of football to be played, but maybe not a bad idea come Nationals. Um, Punishers, three and one. They're third place right now. Strong Island Bulldogs are four for two and one. Takeover, they're fifth at two and one. Long Island Reapers, they're six at three, two and one. No Mercy Scorpions right now, they're one and one. Dragons, they're two and two. Empire, two and three. Chain Gang, oh and two. 56ers, they're oh three and one right now. And sitting in the basement is the New York Rebels at oh and four. What? What'd you say? Huh? Yeah, talk shit. All right. Well, I do back here. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. In case you have uh-huh. These are the teams. We're going to go to the rankings right now. TBT top 25. These are the teams that failed to make the minimum gain qualifications. We say eight is the qualifier. You need eight to make it at least consideration. That's a full season, technically speaking. Um, right now, Panthers are four and one. Obviously, Ducks and Demons, they are obviously separate franchises. It's kind of the petty AFN situation. I'm kind of treating it like that at the moment where I'm not counting their what they're doing yet, but we'll see what this ends up as. If so, I'm kind of leaning towards taking the Panther stuff and, and crediting it towards the Ducks a little bit, and then considering the Demon Circuit record as well. We'll see. Like, like, like I said, but it was the same thing of AFN Petty, where it was I had to sort it out based on what was there on the circuit and what. Uh, um, four and one pressure, four and two overall. They it's tough because they played at Nationals, but they didn't play anything in Rhode Island back in the spring. So this is pressure finally getting off to a start. They could sneak into the rankings depending on how it plays out. They're going to hit eight by the end of the season, and they'll hit a tournament by the time Rhode Island comes. So. 
We'll talk more about them later on. Blazers, they haven't played in a while. Outcast, yeah, I debated counting these two together, but Outcast, I have felt more or less was kind of Rob and Deuce helping out a team as opposed to it being Blazers. So I don't really want to count that there. So they're both kind of sitting there. I don't think we'll see Outcast again, that being said. Um, Wolverines, they're moving up right now, but of course, they're a Bit of a mix. Baez on, as we mentioned, we saw Dallas first earlier on the show talking. They're working with Elite Rebels up there, as well as the Wolverines YAFFL handover team, and a few other guys from the YAFFL jumped on. I don't think we'll see them in a tournament anytime soon. It'll be interesting, though. Let's see how that team would play in the tournament, honestly. Demons, they're three and three in the KFFL. Um, they haven't played in weeks, however. They're going to hit a full weight by the seasons. And Savages, of course, can't really say much on them. Top Dogs, I have no idea where this team is even at, located out of. Um, they're three and four. They got better, though. Show Me Football, Titans, of course. That's the Rhode Island Titans. Gusto Land, NWO, you see them all right there. So those are the teams that failed to make the qualifications. I'm not going to really talk about the rest because there's not much to say on them. I kind of wonder, is OT ever going to come back? Talk about like a random one-off team. Right. Teens have had a tournament appearance, at least since April. And when I say tournaments, I usually mean ones that involve multiple leagues or states. Like, I, not like a league tournament. I don't count a tournament of just us and our buddies. No, to me, it's not really. And it's something that has to be at least sanctioned under – somebody's governing body in mind, man. whether it be like a Jamie Wolf tournament, an Andy Hoffman tournament, or a Donald Gentry tournament. He's not a nine-man director, technically, but Clash of York one counted, so I might as well count Clash of York three. If Clash one counted, Clash three definitely counts. Right. I mean, even TBT made the nine-man rankings that year. I was going to say. Yeah, Jamie called us blunt. <laughs> I like that. Um, so these are the ones that don't have a tournament appearance yet. No excuses, obviously, which they're not going to play till national, from what I've been told. So we're not going to really see them till then. We'll talk about them more then. NTB, what, what's that? Of course, the Wolfpack. Um, St. Louis is not playing right this fall. They're the defending B champions or the STL nine-man champions. This team would be in the top 10, 15 easily if they had played outside of St. Louis this year or this season, rather. Right now, they're kind of sitting on the out. We're going to see what happens with the NTB Wolfpack the rest of the way. Beast Mode, 11-2. and two. Um, They're the league champion. They're not going to be at national, so that's going to be the last we hear from them, I believe. Uh, from what I've gathered so far, maybe something might change there. Playmakers Elite, 11 and 5. They're going to be probably playing in another tournament soon. I think they're going to pop up. And if Capital Classic is a go, I think we'll see them there. Um, but otherwise, PME is a team that if they did play in a tournament, and actually had a correction on that, their record is 12 and 5, not 11 and 5. I'd do the math in my head a little more. PME, I do feel like, though, is one of those teams who's top 10, 15 easily. It's just they're not playing right now in tournament right. play and haven't since World. So I'm waiting to see how they do outside of their bubble, albeit they did almost knock off Rampage back in uh, the math of quarterfinals. Let's we'll see what they got. Back in black, of course, same deal. They're going to be back at Nationals this year. Look forward to seeing back in black then. Uh, of course, there's the Warriors. Yeah. Ballhawks, the business. Chang Gang seven and five. Wait, is that my warrior? That's your warrior. <laughs> um, and then of course the Florida teams, the county teams, some of the Rhode Island still coming up. Um, reckless villains. I think the reckless villains are about done, so less said on them now. They'll be on there for the rest of the season. <laughs> Y'all should play against each other. Eight forty five gang, of course, after that, three and six. Epidemic, they're three and seven. No stars is three and nine. The 56ers are sitting at two, nine and one. And the teams at the bottom and without a tournament appearance, Outlaws and Pure Chaos, they're both a combined two and 26 this year. One and 13 each. They're going to play each other this year. Are you ready for that Outlaws Chaos game? Yeah, I will. 
The winner plays UNR. Messi McCut, teams that have a tournament appearance, but and eight games, but didn't quite make it this time around. Next team out is the Tri-State Spartans at 20 and 12, four and five in tournament ball. They're in a, they're in a down slope, though. X Dogs, they were off this week. Broad Axe, they're dormant. Uh, don't think we'll see them the rest of the way. Hope so, though. I wish we could see them. I kind of miss Broad X at this point. <sighs> Southside, they're 9 and 11. Um, Killer Bees are 8 and 14. Maryland Venom, 8 and 19 and 1 overall this year. Long Island Demons, they're sort of on hiatus at the moment. We'll see what's going on. We're talking about the Panthers thing already. New York Rebels are 7, 12 and 1. They've been on a down slope the last few games. They're currently sitting on a five game losing streak. Tough sledding for the Rebels. GCFFA, man. Got to give them credit. Big Iz is up there just working with his local league guys up there from New Era. It's tough. Um, Baltimore Spartans, six and seven overall. That's a pretty good start for that team. We were kind of skeptical about the Baltimore Spartans, but six and seven. That's what you needed for this team. We, you were skeptical. They're starting to get some. Well, we were skeptical when they started. We didn't know what they were. Yeah, I think they're starting to get somewhere. Brown six and nine. I'm not sure if we'll see the Browns again or not. <laughs> Browns are sitting at six and nine. We haven't seen the Browns in a bit. They haven't really played since. Uh, I think they might have played. I don't think they played Lydia, but they dropped out of that one too. It's a shame. I thought they had a good squad there for a bit. Yeah, I think you had a game of theirs. They almost beat Rampage. Yeah. Yeah. Prime time, they're six and eleven. Bulls, they're five and twenty-two. They're like we said, they're done for the rest of the season from the sound of things. Um it's a shame. That was a team of a lot of potential. It's just injuries. Losing the starting quarterback will kill a team very fast. Um, nomads, four and four. They're kind of just waiting. We'll see more of them. They're going to be up there come the tournament time. That's just one of those teams who they're just – they already know what they can do. Uh, Dirty Birds, they're three and seven. Playing in Rhode Island. Here they got this guy coming up there, big defensive tackle. Yeah. They signed. They signed a guy. Heard. Who? Oh, big name. You'll see him. Seven one seven elite. They're two and eight. They'll pop up. I think one more time, maybe. I've heard they're going to national. Seven one seven is. I don't agree with it either. I, I can. Yeah, I, I don't agree with it. I. I like what D Will's doing, but York, I don't think has enough talent to make that trip down there to make it work. I think they should try to talk to Gusto in prime time to see what they can come up with. Because right. I think that might – because I don't know if there's enough to break down there. We'll see, though. Uh, Steel, they're sitting at 1-8-1. and one. Tough year for Steel. Let's get to the rankings. Maybe a tough year for the Steelers, too. <laughs> yeah. 25, Blackhawks, 12-16, and 16, had a maffle. 24, Dream, they're 10-22 and 22 now. 23, Brick Squad, or 9, 4, and 1. Out of the, yeah, Brick Squad's in the rankings. X Dogs out, Brick Squad in. Nine, four, and four. That's, that's an estimate. Oh, Lydia's legacy does not have any posted results, so it's kind of hard to use that one. Right. This is based on like what I've heard about that tournament. Uh, FOE, they're 22nd, they're 14 to 10 overall. Number 21 is the Bad Boys, 15, 14, and 2. Holding in there pretty strong. 20 is the 148 Outlaws, the 6 and 4. Number 19 is the Dragons, of course. They're 12 and 8. Only us, they're 18, 14, and 1 at 18. Long Island Reapers, 9, 5, and 2. They're 17th. Empire, they're 8 and 6. They're 16th. Worth noting that for Empire, uh, they are currently 3 and 5 since AC. But they've had some stiff competition. They've had the Ducks. They've had the Punishers. Yeah. They're up in GCFFA right now playing. 
Empire is playing the best of the best. You got to give it to them. We got to listen to XFFL. I see them as more of an XFFL squad playing a GCFFA. Um, they're going to bring something to the table later on. We'll see what they can do the rest of the way. Continuing onward. Right out, they're 15, 15, 13, and 1. I still have Elmer a fell list. I mean, Maffle there. I got to fix that. <laughs> Two weeks in a row, I've had that on there. My bad. No offense, Maffle. My bad. Number 14, Maryland Titans, 19, 10, and 1 out of the Elmer fell. 13 is Riot Squad, 11, 4, and 1. I think they'll be at Rhode Island. But otherwise, we won't see much of Riot Squad until Nationals. Uh, Long Island Ducks, I have them 12. They're 10, 7, and 1. Take over. I got 11 if they're nine and six. That Panthers results might boost the Ducks, though. We'll see. Depends how it goes. I'm waiting to see what comes of all that. Because back, remember, back in the spring, we didn't know what was going to happen. We knew AFN and Petty were starting to play together, but we weren't sure if that was going to lead to more or not. And lo and behold, here we are. Uh, number 10, Baez Auto. They're nine and five. Number nine, Elite Rebels, 15, 15, and one. And this is where the change is. Rampage with the, with the double forfeit and the loss at York's. Two losses, in fact. They're going to drop to eighth here. I'm putting them at eight for the moment, 37, 11, and two. Um, that means nothing to them. And they can easily go back to six within a couple of weeks. Like I said, it fluctuates. It's a week to week process, kind of what college football does. Um, number seven is the No Mercy Scorpions, 26, 18, and two. Um, and then of course, moving up misfits 28 and 10. Now second most wins in the country behind rampage. So the misfits surpassed the no mercy scorpions over the weekend for that margin. They came in tied at 24 entering this weekend misfits. though, four and oh, they had an awesome weekend. Now you take a look at what that team did over the weekend, combining the results overall, you're talking about a team that only gave up 12 points all weekend to four teams, three points per game. This team, and this was against TJ Williams, TJ Holston, and Greg Proctor. You got to give it up for what the Misfits are doing right now. And they're not done yet. They got five more in New York this oh, weekend. Man. This is a team that three straight weekends has played in York, Shippensburg, Baltimore, and now up there in uh, New York, Long Island. <sighs> Let's talk. Sheesh. They're on the grind, man. They're on the grind. I saw a couple of them playing basketball on Sunday, too. They get around, bro. Yeah. Misfits basketball. That's the next step. Number – Larry would be nasty at basketball. I could see him actually you doing work. Yo, Larry would do work. Did you not watch it? No, I brought this. Bro, I got a lot of stuff happening. I'm a busy man. Number five, Lions, 24-1. and one. Big, big year for the Lions. This is a team that, you know, they're always great. They're always on top. But, like, we haven't really given the Lions a lot of love this year. We haven't really talked about them in the same vein as what the Misfits have done, the Bulldogs, the Punishers, main event, the Rollers. But the Lions are right now up there. They're running it up in Rhode Island. They played well in GCFFA, semifinalists there, runner-up in OC. Tough break in AC. They had a they ended up falling to the Scorpions in the quarterfinals there. Uh, no, they, they never fell to the Blazers, actually. I think the Blazers got them, my bad. The Blazers got him, or someone got him. Main event did, main event, main event, my bad. I'm, my head's scrambled. Sorry, sorry, long day. Here we go. Lions got fifth. Number four, I'm going to go main event, eight and two. They're just kind of waiting for the next tournament they're in. Number three, we're not going to be in Rhode Island, so we might not see main events on Nationals. Uh, high rollers, they're 11 and two. Number two is the Punishers at 20 and six. And number one overall for this year, 21 and five, the Strong Island Bulldogs. We'll see. There's more to come. Let's get to the next, next one. This is the regional rankings. There we go. I'm going to go full screen again. I started doing a central division and then it just didn't work out. I got maybe about five teams in when I realized it made no sense. So, ignore the central down there. 
first place, it's about the same as last week. Nothing's going to really change here. So, like, it's on the north side, first Bulldogs, Punishers, Rollers, Main Event, Lions, Takeover, Ducks, Riot Squad, Empire, Reapers. And in the south, there is a change, however, for this. Misfits is the new number one down here. Scorpions 2, Rampage 3, Rebels 4, Baez 5, Titan 6, Rideout 7, Only Us 8, Bad Boys 9th, FOE 10th. Bad boys are up. Yep, and that's the regional rankings there. And let's go ahead and get to the games this week. KFFL, they got about six games on slate. Killer Bees and X-Dogs. Rematch of the league championship game. Much different game coming up this time around. Two different teams from what we saw last time. Well, x Dogs always been the same as we usually see, but Killer Bees, not so much the same squad. And then afterwards, x Dogs got another game. They played a lot of doubleheaders this year. They got Demons. That's going to be a 10-05 kickoff. First time matchup between these two particular franchises. And then 11 10, we got the Killer Bees in the West Virginia Venom, which is becoming a very competitive little rivalry there. Bees beat them the first game pretty handily back in April. Second game, however, the Venom got them in an upset back on AC weekend. Um, and then the third game, of course, you can forget that, those, that wild card game between the Bees and Venom. Venom put up one of the best defensive performances you'd see out of a team against an offense in the Bs that was just full of weapons. Take Sosek, quarterback, and everything. 7 nothing was the result there. Benham just falling short. But this Benham team right now, they're catching fire. They're doing a lot of good work. Like I said, I like to see Benham do a tournament, at least one tournament before it's said and done. But I don't think we'll get a chance to see that this year. They're one of those teams that they're still getting started. I consider them a rec-level team at the moment. Um, but that game with B should be a good one on Saturday. Afterwards, 12-15 kickoff, Demons and the Tri-State Spartans. First time matchup between those two teams. And then the last two to wrap it up, Outlaws and the West Virginia Venom at 120. These two teams have been on a journey together for the last year. Started out when they were the Browns and Green Machine last year. I know Lucas Hall is going to sit here and tell me on next time I see him that ain't the same team, but evolution, franchises, origins. You can't have Venom without the Green Machine. And, of course, Outlaws, they were the Browns last season. Uh, this time around, though, Benham's won the last two. They've seen the pool away. We'll see who wins round three here. And, of course, we'll wrap it up with the final game of the day as the Outlaws took on the Tri-State Spartans. Second time these two teams have played. The last time they met was back in April when the Spartans beat them 43-0. So we'll see how much different around this time it is between the Outlaws and the Spartans. GCFFA games this week. These times are off. This was done before they bumped them up. Eric sent me a revised one prior to this, but I never, I didn't get time to really edit the times. So this is what Saturday is looking like. It'll be 6 p.m. actually when the number seven No Mercy Scorpions take on number two Punishers. Um, this will be the second meeting, I believe, between those two this year. They played back at Charm City. Scorpion has knocked off the Punishers in the quarterfinals to advance to the semis. Uh, afterwards, the 215, or sorry, 715, the Scorpions will play Chang Gang. First ever meeting between these two teams. Can the greatest coach of all time knock off the Scorpions? It's going to be a big game for him and his group. And then afterwards, you're going to have at 830, it'll be number six Misfits versus number two Punishers. Second meeting all time between these two franchises. They met back in AC. Misfits won that game 19 to 17. Ross Collins had that game, actually. He's not in the room, so I can't really ask him about it. We'll talk more predictions in a moment. Chang Gang at 4.45 p.m. We'll take on number six, Misfits, right after that. First ever meeting, the greatest coach of flag football versus the Misfits. That's going to be a good one. That Sunday, right out the gate, 8 a.m., number 19 Dragons and number six Misfits, Tony Pangio and company facing off against Chris Boone and company. Should be a really good quarterback match between those two. And then afterwards, we got number 11 Takeover versus number seven No Mercy Scorpions. Uh, that'll be a first-time meeting between those two as well. And then at 9.15 a.m., number six Misfits, number one Strong Island Bulldogs. First-time matchup between these two. Really excited for that game. That's going to be awesome. 
Um, and then the same time be number 19 Dragons versus number seven, No Mercy Scorpions. Followed by at that'd be another first time matchup. Uh, after that, Takeover and Misfits will play at 10 30. Rematch from Atlantic City, uh, where Takeover knocked off the Misfits 22 in the first round. Um, Tay Sosa was a the quarterback there. I think Boo will be quarterback this time around, so it should be a bit of a different game. Result wise, we'll see how it ends up. Same time, you'll have the number seven, No Mercy Scorpions versus number one, Strong Island Bulldogs. First time these two have met since Ocean City, where the Bulldogs knocked off the Scorpions in day one. We'll see if the Scorpions get a measurement of revenge this time around in the Bulldogs turf. And then finally, to wrap up GCFFA this week, we got the 56ers versus number 16, Empire. We'll see how that one goes. Get right on from there. Another first time matchup. Maffle games this week. Right out the gate, 8 a.m., Southside versus number 18, Only Us. Number 24, Dream versus Playmakers Elite. Followed by, at 9.15, we got number 22, FOE versus Southside. We're a rematch there from back in the playoffs. Uh, back in the summertime when Southside pulled off the upset on FOE. But I really like this uh, Playmakers dream game. First time matchup, the old A team of Maffle versus the new A team. But I think the old A team is saying, hey, right. that's our spot. Right. Might want to move. Right. It should be a game either way. 915 as well. Be number 25, Blackhawks is number 24, Dream. Dream has gotten the better of Blackhawks lately. Blackhawks lost to them back in the playoffs back in July. 18 to 3 was the last time there. Blackhawks, no. We'll do predictions in a moment. 10 30 games, number 18, only us versus number 15, ride out. Old school map matchup. You got to love that one. Um, same time, you have number 24, Blackhawks with number 22, FOE. Another old school map matchup. Love those home games. There's old school rivalries down there in Tucker Road. And then to wrap up the day, should be a good one. PME and ride out, number 15 in the country. That's going to be a nice little battle. Between PM, PME and ride out. OMFFL games this week, 8 a.m., number nine, Elite Rebels versus Maryland Venom, followed by number, at the same time, number 21, Bad Boys versus the Baltimore Spartans. Next slot over, you got Bad Boys, Elite Rebels at that slot. I think it's the game to move to 12, actually. So it'll be a 12 p.m. kickoff for Rebels and Venom and Bad Boys Spartans. So 105 will be Bad Boys and Elite Rebels and Spartans and Rampage. And then a wrap of the day, you'll have Bad Boys and Rampage, and it'll be Baltimore Spartans and Elite Rebels. Should be a good one. Bad Boys got to win three in a row. They got to beat Spartans, Rebels, and Rampage to get that one seed. Tough road ahead. Can the Bad Boys do it while the Misfits watch from up there in New York? A lot going on this weekend in the nine-man sport. And, of course, Rhode Island looking at what's going on there. 9 a.m., they have Rebellion versus the 401 Pressure. 10 a.m., Rhode Island Spartans versus the 401 Pressure. Man, you can't prepare for this one, huh, Judge? Yeah. Right I try to make sure to get it. Like, I'm trying to make sure to get it. Yeah, I don't nope. going back to his room. 11 a.m., we got the Rhode Island Titans versus number 23, Brick Squad. Wild Card versus number five, Lions at 12, and then Steel versus Savages. So let's go back. Let's do predictions. We got a lot of predictions on this one. Let's have some fun. That's exactly why I just said what I said. I told you we're going national. <laughs> so, KFFL, we'll start with those Killer Bees X Dogs. Who you... Yeah, let's yeah, start backwards. I should have started with, with RIFF, honestly. Yeah. But let's work riff. on what. Let's work. Riff. Some, let's, let's start calling that Riff. Call Riff. I like riff. That, I, like riff. I like the Riff. Yeah, Riff. KFFL games this week. Killer Bees, X Dogs. Who you got? X Dogs. X Dogs. I got X Dogs too. Demons and X Dogs. Who you got? X Dogs. I got to go with Demons. I think Demons pull it out this week. Bees and Venom. Venom. I got Venom as well. Demons and Spartans. I'm going to go Demons and Venom. I'm going to go Demons as well. Man, that's a whole lot of warrior stuff going on there. A whole lot. I got, yeah, I'll go Demons. Outlaws and Venom. Outlaw, I got Venom too. <laughs> Outlaws and Spartans. 
If Sean, if Sean Simon, if Sean Simmons is there, I think Pat Walls can move his way out. To be honest with to to be totally honest with you, since the last game KF fell, so we'll give them a little bit of highlight. What the hell do the Spartans have? I know they have Eli. <laughs> Eli Beer. <laughs> Who hasn't even been playing tight end, been playing center and shit. Uh, there, I don't know what the Spartans are. Outlaw? I, I would have outlaw. If Sean Simmons is there, I think the outlaws could I'll go Spartans there. just to be different. <laughs> All right. Just to be a just hater. For just for Eli. Do the GCFFA games. Yeah. Scorpions and Punishers. That's a Saturday 6 p.m. game. Oh. I'm going to go with Punishers, too. I think it's going to be tough for Scorps to win up there. Yeah. I think they'll compete, but that's a tough trip. Chang Gang and Scorpions. I'm going to go Scorp- Scorpions, too. I think Deuce will have a good game plan coming in, but I I think Greg Proctor is helping to get the job done. I'm going to go Scorpions as long as Proctor is there. What if it's Smyre? Chang Gang. Really? Yeah. I don't know, man. I think Smyre can beat Chang Gang. You got to remember, Smyre's got a natty, a championship. Right. And a seven point spread advantage every time he plays. <laughs> misfits and Punishers. I'm going to go Misfits. This is going to be a different game than the AC one. I guarantee you that. Yeah, 100%. I'm going to go Punishers. I think Misfits will go up there and play, but I think Punishers will come out there. I don't know. I think Punishers have kind of been a little light this year at times, but I, I think Misfits. They get up for these kind of regular season games. I think they'll get the win up there. Um, and then Misfits and Chang Gang to end the day, or end the night, rather. That's going to be actually a 9.30 kickoff or 9.45 kickoff. Are your, are your times are all there? Yeah, I got the updated schedule literally as we were about to go on. Yeah, so I kind of just didn't get a chance to really do any editing there. Um, I had to get ready. Uh, oh, I'm going to go Misfits, but at least half the Misfits be drunk by that point in the night, too. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> and the, Bro, I still got them with the win. I do, too. <laughs> hey, remember Larry on the bottom of Hennessy on the sideline way back yeah, in the yeah. day in county. Jay Black might be passed out, but hey. And, they play, and he played his best, usually. Sunday games at GCFFA. So they got a Saturday night and Sunday morning here. Or Sunday's times, right? Yeah, Sunday's accurate. Ooh, so they got to play a nine. Saturday nine. got bumped because what happened was a college football game going on where it's at is kind of pushing it up. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So, Sunday, 8 a.m., Dragons and Misfits. Who you got? Yeah. Interesting. Tony Pena versus Chris Moon. I believe that should be the, I believe that should be the matchup. Is that? If each team's coming in 100, which this is a big weekend up there in New York. I wanted to be up there, but I'm, I'm gonna go scheduled to be in Miami right now. I'm going to go Dragons. Dragons. I'm going to go Misfits. I think. Not after playing nine. I don't know. I think it, it's one of those games where it depends on how many numbers the Dragons have and, like, what kind of game plan they got. Very interesting. For that to be it's hard to go up against a Chris Boone offense your first time. Very interesting. I think Misfits get the win. You're probably right there. Takeover and Scorpions. Look at Squirps. Scorpions, too. I think take – it depends. If Takeover brings everybody – they're in a 50-50 squad. They just lost the Dragons a few weeks ago. So, like, I think Scorpions pulled this one out, though. Yeah, I think they did, too, after a bad Saturday. Misfits and Strong Island Bulldogs. Bulldogs. Bulldogs? Just – the yeah, I think Bulldogs will get this one too, but I think Misfits will come out with some motivation. You got to think this will be their fourth game for Misfits by this point, and right. what will be a span by, by, of by that time? Most Misfits will actually be, might be showing up. <laughs> they'll be at thirteen hours 
and four. They'll have four games in thirteen hours of sleep in between the two to start. So this be game four. This will be there <laughs> if you want to actually count it all up. By the time this happens, they'll be at their yeah, eleven. This game will be their eleventh nine man game this month when it kicks off, and right. we are only at the seventeenth at this point, or not the or eighteenth or something like that. Seventeenth, I think, is what Sunday is. Yeah, I think uh, Bulldogs get this one. Dragons and Scorpions. Scorpions, same. That's a long time to sit for the Dragons. No, yeah, no, one game. No, look at the time slots, two fields. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah it just reads that way. Yeah, I still guess so. Yeah. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go dragons. I think dragons get the one the win here. Should be a good game though. Pena Proctor versus Peno. Could be Smyre versus Peno. Is it gonna be Smyre? I don't Peña know what the Peña. Scorpions are doing. I don't know. I, I don't, Greg has a where's he at, man? I don't, don't know. I don't know. I got two viewers. That guy in that NFL and that NFL page yeah, is right. I was, I was He's probably one of them, and so is the other guy. Take over, I'm miss. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You've been watching the whole damn time. Yeah, hey, I had just because I. Who's the other guy? Is my question. Honest, I think yeah, I think yeah. I'm the other guy. Now that I think about it, like, yeah. it's both of us. <laughs> Kyman has been dead tonight. They're probably like this guy's talking about every league, nah, so we don't know. Steady twelve for a while. Yeah, it's a tough for him. Um, take yeah. over, misfits. I don't care. <laughs> Replay value. Yeah, well, we'll cover that. Take over Misfits. You get, I got Misfits in this one. I got Misfits, too. I think Misfits get this one. I just noticed you literally, in the verses, you changed the – Yeah, the color. Yeah, you like that? I just noticed it. Let me be creative. Scorpions and Bulldogs. Bulldogs. I got Bulldogs, too. I think Scorps, by this point, they're going to be gassed. I got Empire in that one, too. Yeah, I got Empire easily. <laughs> 56ers have had a tough time this year up there. They're one of those teams who's probably in the wrong league for them. That's what it sounds like. This is probably the only lo- it's the only local option they have that for nine man. So gotta do what you gotta do. You've been there. Are they just starting out? I think they've been dormant for a couple of years because of COVID. So it's kind of like putting everything back together. Right. South side and only us. We're at Maffle now. Who you got in that one? Only us. I got only us as well. Dream and PME. Who you got? I got PME. I'm gonna get PME as well. Damn it! I thought you did Dream. Nah, I got I got PME. Yeah, the, I'm not just PME is. I don't got them ranked only because they're not in a tournament. If they were in a tournament this year, they'd be ranked already. Because like they could, they're on that level. We know that. We see what PME can do over the years. Um, They've been playing basketball, right? Yeah, it's just they haven't played outside of league play yet. Right, right. Yeah. Um, they just don't, it's crazy to think their last tournament is pushing two years now. Um, Pre COVID. No, no, Worlds. Yeah. FOE at Southside, who you got? I think FOE's got this one. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. A, FOE's like, starting like to play better. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, they're starting to get it. Uh, Blackhawks and Dream. Yeah, Blackhawks. I'm going to go with Dream. Only us and Ride Out. Blackhawks have just had a hard time getting numbers. Like, yeah, I, get, I get concerned about man. them, like, with that. Only us versus Ride Out. Who you got? Ride Out. I got Ride Out as well. Blackhawks FOE. I'm gonna go with FOE here too. PME and ride out game of the week easily yeah, down there. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go PME as well. Damn it! Yeah, I'm gonna go right out there. <laughs> well, you're a dick. I, I just that that game is it's just it's a I good game. Know. It'll be it'll be a close game. I, I just think Do and company pull nah, it off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right. I'm gonna go right out now. What? Legitly. The more I think about it, I think I'm yeah. You think you're gonna go? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> OMFFL. 
These times are also off because that was another last second change. They're now 12 p.m. games. Um, Elite Rebels and Maryland Venom, who you got? So I'm not following the starts on me. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go to Rebels. A lot of late starts this week. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go Rebels as well. Bad Boys and Spartans. I think Spartans compete here. I think Bad Boys pull it out, but I think it'll be one. See, I think Bad Boys have Rebels and Rampage after. This is one of those trap games. Yeah. Like yeah, 8 a.m. I'm going to go Baltimore Spartans. See, that's what I was thinking. About. I think Spartans might pull this one out. That's what I was thinking about the Misfits earlier, too. The Misfits Dragons, they have Bulldogs. After that, they play late the night before. It might be overlooking the Dragons. Well, it depends because, like, I got to say, it's always tough when you play a Chris Boone team for the first time because you don't really know what you're getting into until you play him. And then once you get it, like, we saw what Bad Boys did. Like, despite what happened at the end, the Bad Boys had one of the best game plans that I've never seen a team have against a Chris Boone team. They came in straight up with the plan of, Hold on to the ball, make no mistakes. And I think, and we see what Tony Pena can do out there on the circuit. If he's out there Sunday morning ready to go, I think the Dragons can pull one out. Um, bad Boys Elite Rebels. So just to reiterate, you have Spartans. Yeah. This bad boy. I think Spartans pull it out. And I think Elite Rebels, Bad Boys, which one you got there? I think Rebels win too because I think it's gonna be tough for the bad boys to recuperate for a little bit. That'd be competitive. I think Rebels get it right. I, I do agree with the Spartans will be competitive, but I think the bad boys also will win that game. It'll be much more than what the bad boys anticipated. But is the game. It's the game. Spartans of Rampage. Rampage. I got Rampage as well. Rampage bad. Oh, they'll be ready. <laughs> bad boys of Rampage. I got a rampage as well. I think Bad Boys have a tough sled. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. You got, you got a trap game to start it out, and then you get two top 10 teams right after. Like, that's not a good – that's a tough draw for anybody. Because the Spartans are literally one of those teams that, like, if yeah, that's an you don't want to look – overlook them. Yeah. Like you said, it's almost, it is almost a little trap game. Yeah. Trap game off the gate. <laughs> And then the possibility of having no momentum against Rampage and Rebels. We'll see how it goes. And then last game of the day, Spartans and Rebels. Who you got? Rebels. The Elite Rebels. Yellow. I like the yellow. Charger uniform. Last games of the week, Riff. Riff. 9 a.m. Rebellion in the 401 pressure. Who you got? You did pressure back in the uh, work nationals, did you? The 401 pressure. Is it 410? No, 401. 410 is Baltimore or that area. Mm. 401 is Rhode Island. Because <laughs> I haven't looked that up after I found the name. I'm gonna go pressure because I think I'm, I'm gonna go pressure as well. I think they're a little more season. Rebellion's like zero and six and one right pressure now. Pressure was the ones with like the uh, they had like a bluish uniform. Yeah, yeah. like the uh, Coca Cola Bear. Or yeah, you saw them. Yeah, yeah, yeah the four on one pressure. Yeah, the Polar Bear. Yeah, the Polar Bear. I like that one. Damn, I'm covering a lot of shit. He's been covering a lot of shit. We got a busy year. Crazy thing is, you might not even call again the rest of the year. I'll just see you back, honestly. I miss you out there. Rhode Island tight. Or Rhode I'm Island. Going to no, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Why? I love you in Pennsylvania. Yeah, me in Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Rhode Island Spartans in the 401 pressure. Um, you threw me off this new. I'm gonna go pressure just because it's a whole. Spartan. I think pressure too. I, I've been bashing literally every Spartan team out there all night. You just hate so. Spartans. <laughs> I really just feel like it's it's not a good name for a five football team. Just all the things I've seen. True that. Titans and Brick Squad. Rhode Island Titans, yeah. by the way. I'm gonna go Brick Squad. I'm gonna go Brick Squad as well. Yeah. 
Brick Squad can bring it. I think they'll get the win here too. Did he? I didn't know that. No, I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't there. Well, you weren't there, but you knew that. No, I didn't. I literally did not know that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if that's true. Sammy's team. Yeah. Most of them came from uh, his old team. Oh, uh, okay. You might have heard that somewhere, I guess. Wild card of life. All right. The wolf's mouth himself. I wasn't there. <laughs> if I wasn't there, it didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> Wild card versus Lions. Who you got? Lions. <laughs> yeah, I got Lions. Wild card. Terrible name. <laughs> like, like, especially when you write it out in the schedule, you're like, send, all, what is send all hate mail to at Ross Collins. Yeah, that's me. Final game. <laughs> I'm not hard to find on Facebook. I'm at work. But anyway, he literally like, is especially when you put it on schedule, it almost looked like looking at this, yeah. if you didn't know any better, you would almost say, like, the winner of the first couple rounds is wild card versus lines. It's terrible thing. <laughs> anyway. Direct I all hate mail to <laughs> at Ross Collins. All the wild card players who are not watching this show at no. all or no Literally weeks. only one viewer. No. Pretty it's sure not, it's you at this point. It's not even counting you anymore. <laughs> We're good. I don't think I was counting. Oh well. I don't think we're it, It's tough when you're covering five leagues and don't announce the show now to an hour. Uh, probably, uh, Someone else he came back just now. It's probably uh, what's his face? Lafon. Derek Lafon? Yeah. If right. he calls in on that. It's probably him. Final game of the day. That's how we turn this show. Steel well, uh, versus Savages. I'm gonna go Savages. I'm gonna go Savage as well. Tough to hear for Steel. So that's really it for this week in Nine Man. We'll have more next week. Well, uh, three. Yeah. Ever since the set, now I count you again. <laughs> yeah, they are. Facebook. Facebook. Anyway, this is really all we got this week. I'm not going to be covering any Nine Man games. We're supposed to be doing something else, but still working all that out. Saturday, I'll be I back. Got, I got a little kid game to coach today. You coaching Saturday? You got to play Little Town. Apparently, Middletown is not very good. Coaching. Yeah. See how it all goes. We'll be back next week for Blunt Talk. Over Middletown. Always. We'll be back for next week for Blunt Talk. We got uh, for next week's show, OMFFL playoffs coming up and Maffel. So, we're going to be wrapping up two leagues next weekend in this area, both Owings Mills and Maffel. We'll talk about uh, the playoffs for both of those. We'll have some interviews. We'll do a special show to that. Um, we'll also go over the recap, of course. And, of course, with the jerseys in the back, if you want a donation up front, TBT, breast cancer awareness jerseys, we got them right here. Joey Blaze, TBT, Ross Collins. That's me. Team-wise, check out this week. You got main event represented up there, the old I, trench pool jersey. jersey man. I love that jersey as now, well. I, I want to, but I want to keep the main event emphasized. Trench bullies. You know what? We'll pull it off the wall. Take a little inside of glimpse. I love this one. This is a good one. Shout out to Mike D, main event and company for it. Rest in peace, Christopher Severino. I know we're approaching one year very soon uh, since Seth's passing. In fact, we're almost a year to the only time I talked to Seth last year at Corona Classic. He had hit me up to come up there. Unfortunately, I was unable to make it, but it, is he gonna get it? What's that? I want to make. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was not able to make it uh, because of, it was canceled, obviously. But it was a huge honor to hear to have Severino ask me to come up to New York and cover that. Uh, meant a lot to me at the time. Rest in peace, Sev. We share a birthday. Like I always meant a lot to me as well. Uh, April 22nd. I wish I could have known. Uh, it's, un- it's unfortunate because, like, I saw Sev one time, and that was really it. And that was in Worlds, uh, right before the championship game at the coin toss. I stood there and shot Severino doing it with the other second-gen players. 
Seb was an awesome – Seb seems like a cool dude. I, I really wish I had a chance to meet Seb and actually get a chance to know. We only had one conversation over the phone, unfortunately. Um, but the work that Christopher Severino did up there in GCFFA, you're seeing it come to full circle this weekend, what's going on up there in New York, because you got a lot of great nine-man flag football action mm-hmm. up there. And, you know – this is a big week in general. We got five active leagues right now. KFFL in Shippensburg, Maffle down there at Tucker Road, down towards DC. You got OMFFL going on in Baltimore, uh, GCFFA in New York, Rhode Island. Nine man, it may not be what it was back in the spring in terms of a lot of presentation. We don't got St. Louis going. I know Miami. St. Louis will be back next spring, I hope. I believe they're going to find a way. It's just tough this fall to find the facilities and make it work. I know SFFA, they're talking about coming back in February after nationals for a winter season. Um, so looking forward to seeing that come to fruition. Um, we'll talk more about them and other leagues throughout the year. This is, we're kind of in a weird stretch right now because it's, it's kind of cooled down a little bit, but it's a calm before a storm that's ahead. Because next week begins champions month and we're going to crown a lot of champions between now and thanksgiving wrapping up with turkey bowl 15 i'm joey blaze he's ross collins we'll see you next week